Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, a preview of the Boxing in the UK this weekend. There's a couple of cards going down, and I knew before, well I knew, but I knew beforehand that the cards this weekend were not particularly strong. However, looking through them now, I mean, they are god awful. British boxing in the mud, Mr. Billion Dollar Eddie Hearn leaving Sky Sports to get a bigger budget and put on better shows, and this is what he serves up. You know, Frank Warren out here winning purse bids with Dillian White and Tyson Fury, uh, Demetrius Andrade and Joseph, uh, sorry, yeah, Zach Parker. I mean, Frank's done a couple of bits recently, but the card he's putting on this weekend is an absolute shower of shite. Now, I guess we'll start with the, with the DAZN card, because it is the most high-profile UK card this weekend. Headlined by Conor Ben versus Chris Van Heerden. Now, Chris Van Heerden, a couple of years ago, I mean, a decent yardstick for an up-and-comer at welterweight. But once again, Conor Ben is fighting somebody who is on the wrong side of 30, can't punch, past his best, and more than likely will go in there with no ambition. Chris Van Heerden, he can look after himself. He's, he's a competent southpaw, but not a big puncher, not all that dynamic, not all that quick, and ultimately, let's be real, he's there to make up the numbers, as far as I'm concerned. And, um, yeah, to make, to make matters worse, if you look at Chris Van Heerden, he's had one round in over two and a half years, nearly three years. One round of activity in nearly three years. That is absolutely appalling. Um, you know, he stepped up against Errol Spence, got stopped. That was back in 2015. Um, lost to Nikola Stevanovic back in 2010. Um, I mean, he he's nothing to write home about. Uh, he's really nothing to write home about, uh, Chris Van Heerden. Um, Mike, he'll give Conor Ben a few rounds, but in regards to actually offering any real resistance, I can't see it. Uh, the fight in, it infuses me about as much as me dragging my ball sack across sandpaper. You know, Conor Ben, I mean, I, I get that he had no amateur background or very little, but... You know, there's a pattern now of these of these guys coming off losses or guys who are past their best being Conor Ben opponents. I mean, Chris Algieri last time out, basically a part-time boxer, semi-retired. Uh, his main gig is commentary. I mean, it's poor, isn't it? I mean, I, I understood Sebastian Formea was a great opponent at the time. Samuel Vargas made sense. Even Granados, he made sense as well. But I think at this point... Conor Ben should have started to step up against guys with genuine ambition. I don't believe Chris Van Heerden has ambition. I didn't believe that Chris Algieri had ambition. Um, for me, it's poor. For me, it's poor. Uh, especially for a main event, you know. On the undercard, you do have one really good fight. This is close to a 50-50. It's actually a rematch. Uh, Chris Billum smith versus Tommy McCarthy at Cruiserweight. Uh, first time around, Chris Billum Smith won a close decision. I believe it was a split decision. Could have genuinely gone either way. So it makes sense to do this rematch, and it's genuinely a good fight. So I've got no problems there. Good domestic clash. What's not to like? Alicia Baumgartner, she's fighting. I'm not a fan of female boxing, but she does look damn good. But look at the look at her opponent's record. Not interested. And then you have a whole host of prospects in knockover jobs. I like Jordan Thompson, but, you know, it's time to step up now. I, I do like Jordan, but I wanted a much better opponent. Cyrus Patterson, 3-0, the usual type of opponent. Thomas, Thomas Whittaker Hart, I don't rate him. Campbell Hatton, I don't rate him. Jack Cullen, in there with Vladimir Belutsky. I mean, why can't Jack Cullen have a decent opponent? Ugh. James Metcalf in with a scrub, not interested. One 50-50 fight or one close to 50-50 fight on the card. God awful, 
overall it's pretty garbage. And then we get to Frank Warren's shower of shite. Headlines by Jason Cunningham, who's done really well recently at Super Bantamweight. Uh, he is fighting Terry Lacouvier from France for the European title. Uh, Jason Cunningham obviously won that title against, I believe, Galau Yafai. Not Galau Yafai, is it Galau Yafai? Yeah, Gamal Yafai, sorry. He won that title against Gamal Yafai, a bit of an upset win, and he then beat Brad Foster, where he claimed to be British title. So Jason Cunningham is actually in the best form of his career. He's defending his European title against an unknown Frenchman. Uh, now, this may be me being a bit... Maybe I'm being unfair here. Maybe this dude is better than I expect, but 16-0, and 0, only two knockouts... If you look at his resume, he's fought absolutely nobody. I have to say, I've not, I, I, I haven't seen this guy fight. But usually, when it comes to unknown guys on Frank Warren cards, they're usually pretty shit going by going by history. So, not interested. Andrew Kane versus Pablo Ariel Gomez. Andrew Kane is a decent prospect, but I'm expecting him to win that fight quite easily. Nathan Heaney, I have no interest in whatsoever. He's dire, uh, basically just a ticket seller. He's fighting Diego Ramirez. I actually rem uh, remember this dude. I think he knocked out Bradley Skeet. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he knocked out Bradley Skeet back in 2018. Um, but again, that was at welterweight. This is at middleweight. Having said that, Nathan Heaney is so shit. Maybe Diego Ramirez gives him trouble. That could be a good fight, just based on how bad Heaney is. But any any decent middleweight prospect will take care of Ramirez in double quick time. And other than that, you have a whole host of prospects, obviously fighting knockover jobs, basically. Knockover jobs. So think about it, yeah? This card here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10. 10 fight card right here on BT. And you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 fight card on the zone. So you have 20 fights this weekend in the UK. And you have one fight out of from two cards with 20 fights. You have one fight that is arguably a 50 50, could go either way. The rest are complete mismatches on paper. So. You know, this is for quality being quality being served up right now. Uh, poor. Really, really poor. Frank's got, you know, Frank's got a couple of good fights coming up in White versus Fury and Parker versus Andrade. But the card this weekend is absolutely dreadful. And same goes for Matchroom, man. It's, it's, it's poor. It's really poor. Is this what you left Sky Sports for? To put cards on like this? I mean, you, you were supposed to have a bigger budget, you know, bigger, better, brighter, etc, etc, etc. And this is the cards, this is the standard of cards you're putting on. Not good enough. One 50-50 fight the whole weekend between the two major promoters in the UK. But British boxing is booming, I'm being told. Listen, Tyson Fury, Dillian White and Anthony Joshua are the only factors in UK boxing in terms of being draws. In, ter in, in terms of, draw uh, you know, drawing in ratings. Once those guys go, I, I believe British boxing is going to be in a bit of a dark period, quite frankly. Once that bubble bursts, I think we're going to be in a dark period. Um, hopefully some of, these, some of these 2021 Olympians uh, do something because we are in desperate need of a fresh injection of talent in the UK. And not only talent, guys who can actually shift the ticket and get people interested. Um, you know, Conor Ben is, is somewhat that, I guess. But again, Conor Ben just, he comes across everything about Conor Ben. His career, how he's being moved, his persona. Everything comes across as so manufactured. It's hard for, it's hard for me to get invested. And yeah, to me, he's a bit of an imitation right now. Uh, a bit of a cheap knockoff, I guess I would say. Uh, a fake prospect. Um... So yeah, I, I'm not satisfied whatsoever by this weekend's boxing in the UK. Compare that to the PBC's card this weekend. And everybody likes to rag on the PBC, but Showtime have actually been putting on pretty good cards in recent times. Look at this. This is a pay-per-view quality card in the USA. 
great main event. Butaya versus Stanionis, great fight. Crowley versus Lopez, great fight. You know, there's there's some decent fights on this card. That's for standard, but you know, the regular UK cards right now are looking garbage. And you may say, well, that's, un that's unfair to compare these cards to a pay-per-view. Fair enough. But just go back and look at last week's Showtime card. Ericsson Lubin versus Sebastian Fandora. Great main event. Awesome main event. You had Bryant Perella in there with a really good prospect. That, that ended up being a competitive fight and a draw. You had Tony Harrison fighting the dangerous Sergio Garcia. That's a good card. That's a good free fight card. And compare that to most of zone cards. Look at the zone card last weekend with Ryan Garcia. The undercard was pretty shit, in my opinion. So yeah, the zone need to up their game as far as I'm concerned. They need to up their game. Uh, as do BT, man. BT, Big Frank, what's he doing? Awful, 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 awful. But yeah, you know, according to these these hype channels, British boxing is, you know, uh, the, the biggest and brightest. Yeah. Uh, Whatever, whatever. I'll probably I'll probably watch the Conor Ben fight and, and miss everything else. And I'll, I'll watch Conor Ben. I'll watch um, Chris Billum Smith, Jason McCarthy, and I kid you not, every other fight I'm not going to watch. That's how. I, but yeah, that's that's my uh, uh, that's my plan for this weekend. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy. Peace.